If you are like most watch collectors, you probably have contemplated owning a timepiece with a tourbillon at some point in your lifetime, and as I am like most watch collectors, I've been contemplating it for a long while. I finally broke about 3 months ago and spent a very painful $600 on AliExpress. What arrived is this, the aptly named Sugas Tolbion Master. Now of course, before my purchase, there were a multitude of considerations I had to make. Considerations that range from, do I have $600 to spare? Do I really want a Tolbion that bad? And what the fuck do I do if the watch decides to break on me? The last question is probably shared amongst most people who have even had an inkling of an urge to buy one of these cheap Asian tourbillons. I mean, the watch itself retails at a measly $600, while the cheaper Swiss tourbillons cost almost 16 times as much, with some to this day still facing some quality control issues. Does this mean that the probably poorly paid Chinese labourers are being too ambitious, or are the Swiss just overcharging for their craftsmanship? I, I guess we're about to find out. The Torbjorn Master that I have comes equipped with a Seagull ST8230, one of the more commonly seen Seagull Torbjorn movements out there. Being a rather cheap movement, it seems that the designers and producers mainly focused on making the movement as simple and durable as possible within the rather large tolerances that the Seagull watchmakers follow. Either way, this makes the movement one wide-ass movement, so wide that even with the watch's case size at 41mm, the movement nearly spans the whole case back of the watch, taking into account that the standard Seiko NH35 is only roughly 27mm wide. This is most likely thanks to the need of having that massive tourbillon above the 6 o'clock position, who would have thought? However, thankfully the thinness of the movement results in a respectable overall case thickness of just 11mm if you include the domed sapphire glass. Now, before I had this watch, I barely understood the true importance of a well-designed case, with it promptly making me realise that, hey, lug sizes do matter a lot. The shorter lug to lug of around 49.5mm really allows it to look better than many other similarly sized dress watches out there, especially on smaller wrists. This makes the watch wear more like a 40mm than an actual 41, which means it can be suitable for people with wrists of 7 inches and above, and maybe even 6.5 if you don't mind looking a bit strange. Besides the well-designed case, the finishing on the case is also absolutely brilliant. The brushing on the sides of the case is done really well, and there is not much messy overlap of the brush sections to the polished top surfaces of the lugs. I also love the angular bezel of the watch, which adds slightly more character to it than just a generic round bezel found on most cheaper dress watches. I feel that the beveled bezel also shows a little more effort from Suges. The watch also comes with an anti-reflective coated domed sapphire glass, and also a sapphire glass case back. This domed slab of sapphire displays the really magnificent dial and handset with a window through the dial showcasing, of course, the tourbillon. And if you are an avid viewer of my channel, you know I have a special soft spot for the watch brand Breguet in a respectfully non-creepy way. Trust me. Please. In that aspect, I love how Suges gave homage to Breguet by including a version of their own tourbillon with Breguet's signature guilloche and brush dial, and Breguet's style heat-treated hands, not forgetting of course the few other versions of this watch that also have Breguet-inspired designs. The case back on the watch is a simple screwed on case back with a huge piece of sapphire glass that almost spans the whole back of the watch. This see through crystal shows off the Code de Genève inspired decoration on the ST8230, with it being one of the most well decorated seagull movements I have seen to date, even when compared to the famous ST1908, found in almost every mechanical chronograph under $500. Not only is the finishing of the movement on display, the winding gear train is as well, which is something that I love to absorb myself in while waiting in a queue or patiently anticipating my queue number to pop up at the local clinic. And as we look further, we see some small gaps and windows which shows the wheel system that allows for the whole watch to function with the tourbillon. Besides the beauty and glamour, the case back being a screwed on case back gives the watch a claimed water resistance of 50 meters. 
Another fantastic part of this watch is the strap. With reference to how most of the other Chinese brands function, I totally expected for this watch to come with a really subpar genuine leather strap, despite the price. Now you may be wondering what's so bad about genuine leather. Well, when a strap or frankly any other leather product is stamped with the words genuine leather, it usually means that the lowest grade of real leather is used to create it. This strap, however, is stamped with Genuine Alligator, which is from what I have seen, slightly better than what brands usually provide. Though, take this with a grain of salt. After all, it is just a stamp and it could mean nothing. However, I would still like to applaud the quality of the strap. The stitching is done excellently and the strap even comes with a really good quality quick-release spring bars. However, one unfortunate con of this strap system is the butterfly clasp that they unfortunately use for almost every dress watch in the Suges lineup. After owning about three of Suges' dress watches, I have noticed that the butterfly clasp they use is just generally sharp. Personally, it only affects me in certain conditions, like when it's hot out or when I am just generally sweating. On certain days, it feels as if someone is trying to slice my wrist open with a blunt plastic knife, while on others, it's as if I was just wearing a comfortable rubber band as a watch. I think I may just get another strap and buckle to replace this. The guilloche style dial on this watch, like the other dial variations in the Tolby Online, is executed absolutely brilliantly. Under light, the guilloche style finishing flashes its triangular patterns, while the brushed minute track makes the dial extremely legible and easy to use. And I know I have said this in the past for other watches, but I now feel that for under a thousand dollars, this Suges is genuinely the most well-executed guilloche dial I have ever seen. Despite the dial probably being stamped, at a macro level it looks almost as good as the Hobnose Guilloche machined by Rose Engines in the more luxurious manufacturers like Breguet and Vacheron Constantin. Even the raised platform for the Suges logo is done extremely well. The dial also contains a small but very obvious window at 6 o'clock that displays the tourbillon ticking away very loudly. The seconds markers surrounding the tourbillon also have some beautiful guilloche-like finishing which adds onto the dial's beauty. Along with the beautiful dial making that is pretty evident on the surface, we must not overlook that this timepiece also comes with heat blued hands, which is just another sign of the effort that Suges had put in to make this watch as good as it can be. The blue hands on this watch are actually quite subtle, only revealing itself under certain lighting scenarios, but when they do appear, they shine with a deep and smooth blue colour, which is just really pleasing to the eye, especially when combined with that silvery white guilloche dial. One extremely small design choice that I dislike, however, is how thick the dial is, as visible via the tourbillon window. If they had made the dial slightly thinner, the whole watch could possibly be thinner as well. The thicker dial also casts a slight shadow over the tourbillon sometimes, making it a bit understated and occasionally hard to look at. I feel that a watch with mainly a tourbillon should display the tourbillon proudly, like it's the centre of attention, or maybe it's just me. Despite this, we have to understand that this may actually be the result of how the movement was designed, with the dial being thick to compensate for the longer hand pinions. The ST8230 is undoubtedly one of the cheapest tourbillons available on the market right now, but from what I've noticed with my one year of experience in watchmaking and finishing, the manufacturing of this movement is actually done quite well, and might I say, even better than some of Seiko's more basic movements. The visibly nicely finished and smoothly rotating gear trains at the back of the watch really shows that Chinese watchmaking is no joke, and with the arrival of Chinese luxury watch brands like Barron's and Age Loca, and Western brands that use Chinese movements like Aventi, shows that the Chinese watchmaking industry is not something to be easily dismissed, and this also means that a large sum of the global watch community who just stick with European-made watches are properly missing out, and we haven't even mentioned brands like Grand Seiko. I should say one thing though, despite my boasts of the craftsmanship and how well the components in my ST8230 are made, I do notice a problem that many of these Chinese movements share, which is the idea of assembly. Many Chinese movement manufacturers choose to use cheaper oils and occasionally rush the assembly of these beautiful calibers, which brings in the antichrist of the mechanical watch world, dust, dirt and grime. Upon further inspection of my ST8230 when I first received it, I began to notice some minute print marks and signs of over-oiling on the gear train. There was also a small speck of dust on the back surface of the movement, which I removed immediately. Hence, you don't see it in the macro shots today. You just gotta trust me on that. 
Granted, a minor speck of dust and an accidental fingerprint may not completely destroy the movement, and is also quite a common sight on watches from well-established brands like Seiko and even Tissot, but it is an improvement that the Chinese movement manufacturers like Seagull and Hangzhou can look into. The movement, like most of Seagull's hand-wound movements, feels extremely smooth to wind. The winding mechanism gives off a vintage Swiss winding feeling, with a stopper at the end when the watch is fully wound. The crown shape is also well chosen and is very comfortable to my fingers. However, one thing I do hate about the crown is the hilariously simple but ugly S they had laser etched onto the top. I mean, you may as well use Comic Sans. The ST8230 ticks away at 21,600 beats per hour and gives me an error of less than 5 seconds a day. And from what I've seen, this is the common number across many of the other Seagull tourbillons, which is a great bonus if you care about the precision accuracy of your watch. The tourbillon fitted Seagull movements also features a decent 2.5 day power reserve of 60 hours. Besides all that, I want to talk about the main attraction of this watch, which is the beautiful tourbillon sitting at 6 o'clock. Sagas had mainly two tourbillon calibers, the SC8000 and the SC8230, and a few variations that stem from this same family of tourbillons. I picked the 8230 as I preferred the central balance wheel to the offset balance found in the SC8000. It just looks more symmetrical to me. From researching this tourbillon, I have also discovered an interesting discussion on what type of tourbillon the Seagull SC8230 is. See, one of the oldest watchmakers in history, Blancpain, created a different variation of a tourbillon figuratively named the Carousel. Due to how the power is supplied to the tourbillon, unlike a standard tourbillon where power from the barrel rotates the timing mechanism around a fixed gear, in the Carousel tourbillon, the barrel rotates the timing mechanism itself, whilst the escapement is also powered by the barrel. However, this doesn't apply to the SC8000 family since all tourbillons in the series are just standard tourbillons, although it may seem like a carousel. With the tourbillon, the nice case, the decent strap and the beautiful dial, this watch could not have been more of a steal at $600. There isn't really any other option that you can find at this price that is as good. And believe me, I have looked at brands like the $300 Aesop and the $1000 H-Loka tourbillons, with the honourable mention being the new Ginlery series of skeletonized tourbillons, though not many can speak of the reliability of those movements. Out of all those, I feel in a dress watch oriented way, the Suges Tourbillon is one of the most if not the most value for money tourbillons you can find on AliExpress right now, especially considering that the SC8000 series of movements is one of the more common and reliable cheaper Chinese tourbillons out there. And if you want to buy this watch or some other nice Suges Tourbillons, do check out the links in the description to help support my channel along the way. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and remember to subscribe to the channel. If you have any suggestions, please leave it in the comments below and I hope this video encourages you to explore the diverse and mind you highly interesting world of cheaper Chinese complications. Anyways, with all that said and done, thank you for watching and I hope you have a very nice day.